Hello there! In my opinion, nothing beats the look of the Greek Corinthian helmet, like this one. Not the Roman ones, not the medieval ones with their visors. The Corinthian is just one of a kind. And you know what's even more cool? When the Hoplites put their crests on the helmet. This one doesn't have it, but this one does. That's right, this Spartan horsehair crest is what we're going to be creating today. This time using Blender 2.8, its particle hair system and the new hair shading tools. So let's get to it. So here we are in Pure Ref, my favorite software for gathering reference. If you want to know more about it, just head over to my previous tutorial on creating the Aspis shield. Uh, there's a whole chapter about it there. And as usual, I gathered some interesting photos from the net, images that caught my attention with different details. Uh, for example, this hanging part of the crest is definitely something I want to create, as well as these loose bits of hair, uh, which tend to happen to helmet crests when they're often used. Color-wise, I really like this red and white combination, uh, so that's what we'll be creating in this tutorial. And yes, I'm using the Blender 2.8 Alpha version 2, which came out some time ago and it features some awesome new stuff, mainly the all new principled hair BSDF shader, which is really awesome and it is now built into the 2.79 version as well. So you can follow this tutorial even if you're using the older one. I myself have decided that I've been avoiding this 2.8 version for far too long. Uh, you can get it on this address and basically whatever is read uh, is the newest 2.8 build. Still experimental but getting there. Okay, I'll be using this Spartan model for this tutorial. It's actually part of a bigger artwork I'm currently working on. And of course I'm recording everything. So probably around the end of October I release a course about its creation. And it's going to be big, I can tell you that. So stay tuned. First thing, we are going to duplicate this crest holder mesh and delete all the faces except for these. I do it by selecting the faces I want to keep in the edit mode, hitting Ctrl I and hitting delete or X. I then delete the subsurf modifier and apply the mirror modifier. This way we created the base for our hair particles, because you generally don't really want to put the hair directly on your mesh. It's better to have a special object slightly submerged under the surface of the original mesh. Also don't forget to center the origin of the object and also by hitting Ctrl A uh, reset the rotation and scale. Alright, time for some 2.8 awesomeness. Uh, let's activate some shading options here. First the cavity display, also shadows and let's choose some nice looking matcap. I think this one will do. Now let's go ahead and create our first particle system, uh, name it Crest Hair Base and set it to hair. I set the hair length to about 0.4 but it depends on the size of your scene so feel free to experiment basically with everything I set up here. Also I changed the number of hair to 500. Very important setting is hidden in the hair shape tab uh, where I set up the radius root and the tip so that they're thinner looking more like hair strands. 0 0.1 and 0 0.01 will do for now. Also we will activate the children system and choose simple for it. Uh, there is a number of settings here but the main one will be playing with the use clump curve. Of course you can set a fixed clump and shape value, but I like to add a bit of randomness by using this curve. Basically what the clumping does is how clump the hair will be, uh, obviously. <laughs> and the lower the value uh, or the dot in this curve, the more connected the strands will be, while the higher, the more loose and ruffled. Also I'm adding a number of children particles to render and making their length a bit more random. Now let's set up our render region by hitting Ctrl B and let's do a test render. It's looking quite good and thanks to the clumping curve we even have the same shape around the root of the hair that I wanted. Let's save the project and 
Now a bit of a warning, if you're going to be working with the 2.8 version, be prepared that it will crash on you every now and then. So have autosave set up and hit Ctrl S often. With the particle base selected, I switch to the particle edit mode and here we will start editing the hair strands manually. Be warned though, uh, after you start editing in this mode, you won't be able to change the number of strands and the hair length in the emission tab. You will have to do it manually or lose your editing progress. I already talked about these tools a fair bit in the Aspis tutorial, so head on to the Blender part of it to learn some more about these. Uh, we'll be using mostly comb to change the shape of the hair, length and cut to make the strands longer or shorter, and sometimes smooth and puff to change the volume. Here you can see me gently combing the crest from the front view, adding a bit of randomness to the shape. Now a new test render, uh, which in this version I do by hitting F12. Unfortunately the screencast add-on does not work just yet in 2.8, so you won't be able to see the keys I'm hitting, but I'll comment along the way. Here by hitting Alt J I'm switching between the current and the previous render in the different render slots, and I can clearly see what difference did the combing make. Time to add the principled hair BSDF, uh, the super simple, super accurate hair shader that the developers added to the 2.8 version. They actually based it on Pixar's hair technology and it really looks and works awesome. For our tutorial, we will be using the melanin concentration mode. You can also choose direct coloring for more emphasis on color or absorption for more advanced results but the melanin one is the most realistic and also very simple. The settings I experimented with were uh, 0 0.4 for melanin, uh, 0 0.8 for melanin roughness. I added red color and set the roughness and radial roughness to 0 0.3. Also to add a bit of randomness, I added 0 0.5 to color and 0 0.3 to roughness. If you want to know more about how this principled hair BSDF shader works, head on to the Blender documentation, there's a great overview there, uh, the link is in the description. Now let's switch the slot and try to render it. Not looking bad at all, especially when you see the difference. Also throughout the process I kept playing with the clumping curve, making a little changes to the shape of the hair, uh, you can see the difference here. By clicking this icon in the particle tab, you can hide the different particle systems you have set up and if Blender keeps crashing for you, I recommend that you hide anything you're not working with. Here I am choosing the original base hair system that we created, duplicating it and creating a copy. We will use it to create the white hair variation. One more tip, if you disable the children while editing the hair in the particle edit mode, there's a lower chance Blender will crash on you. Also don't be surprised if your hair just keeps disappearing, it does it sometimes, all you need to do is switch modes or hide and unhide it. Here I am naming the red hair material properly and creating a new slot where I put a duplicate of this material. I name it hair white and change the tint to sort of a grey color. To differentiate the two particle systems in the viewport, I set red diffuse in the viewport display tab. Then in the render tab of the particle system, I make sure the material is set to red one. And of course white one for the white particles. Here you see me hitting the display modifier button, uh, the hair system refreshes and it pops back in. Now let's delete the red hair where the white is supposed to be. For that purpose I use the grease pencil. I hold down D and indicate which area needs to be deleted. Then I go to the particle edit mode and cut it out where indicated. When I'm done I hide the grease pencil strokes and start adjusting the white hair particles with the comb brush. At this point I keep combing the hair and keep switching between the two particle systems, adding in new hair strands by using add, making them longer to match the length with the red hair and then cutting away where it's needed. 
This way I made the two hair systems roughly the same length, but by cutting them I introduced some errors where the hair strands basically go through the geometry. Before I fix that, however, I go in and lower the melanin color and roughness to zero to make the white hair truly white. Now that looks better. Now let's go back and cut away those short hair that are causing the problems. Uh, by making the brush smaller by holding F and moving the mouse, I'm able to delete just single hair strands, especially those near the edges of the mesh. One thing that will help you in this process is the X-ray mode uh, that will make the mesh see-through and the short hair strands will be easier to spot. I then repeated this process for both the hair systems until all was cleaned up and no rogue children were going through the mesh. By making the cut brush very very small you are able to individually delete single hair strands. And now that it's done we can move on to the next particle system we will be creating which is the curly hair. Let's start off by adding a new slot in the particle menu and duplicating the white hair preset. Now let's just lower the number of children because we don't need so many, it's just uh, individual hair for this system. I'm playing around with its clumping curve, making the ends a bit looser and I'm adding a kink type wave that will make the hair more chaotic. Set the amplitude to about 0.2, the shape to 0.7 or simply experiment with the different types of kink. It's all just a matter of how crazy you want your curled hair to look. I'm lowering the number of children even more and then I'm going to the particle edit mode and manually start deleting various hair strands. Once that's done and all the short hair deleted it's time for another test render and here you can see some little unevenness in the hair. Not much, but enough to make it less uniform. Still I go back and by combing the loose hair system I add more variety to its shape. It's important to comb the hair not only from the front view but also from the side view so that they're more dispersed. Alright, now it's time to do the same thing for the red loose hair. I'm adding a copy of the loose hair system using the grease pencil to indicate where to delete the strands, then deleting those I don't need, as well as the rogue ones. So since it's a repetition of the same workflow, I'll speed up the process. And you already know what speeding up the footage means, it's time for a historical fun fact. Apart from looking bloody awesome, the crest actually did not serve any purpose other than making the wearer look taller and more imposing. Simply put, it was all for the show. Sometimes the crest added more than 25 centimeters or 10 inches of height and combined with the brightly colored shield aspis, it made the heavily armored phalanx a really magnificent spectacle. The crest we are creating in this tutorial is actually called the Trenverse Crest popular among the nobles and generals of Sparta. It was not commonly used by normal soldiers, they tended to use a more widespread Corinthian crest. And that was the first fun fact for this tutorial. Okay, now that this is done, it's time for the final part of the crest. Let's create a new particle slot, duplicate the base preset and call it crest long hair. And then in the particle edit mode, delete all the strands and place just a few manually. One thing to note, if you want to add just one strand at a time, you specify count to one instead of three, which is there by default. My goal is to make these strands longer than the rest of the crest. So I'm using length and comp in combination and slowly pushing them down, trying to smoothly curve them as if they were hanging from the helmet. After some time of doing this process and pushing and pulling and cutting away, uh, I achieved this result. 
However, it's still not really what I'm looking for. So I decided to play with the strands some more. If the hair is not doing what you want, there is a useful tool that is hidden in the bottom left corner of the viewport. There you can switch between editing the strand as a whole, editing all the vertices of the strands or just pulling by the tips of the hair. For finer editing use the first two, for general shaping use the third. By using these tools I'm trying to find a good looking shape and also not to make my Spartan look like Pippi Longstocking. Anyway, the process remains, so I'll speed up the footage. And it's historical fun fact time. The crest was tied into an ornate crest box, usually made of wood, while the hair itself was actually dyed horse hair. The crest box was either nailed to the helmet or glued on top of it by using pitch. At the time, at around 480 BC, pitch was normally used as a universal glue. After a lot of trial and error I was finally quite happy with the result and it was time to add a final layer of polish by adding just a few hand placed long hair strands. I began again by duplicating the already existing presets and naming this one loose hair. Then I went into the particle edit mode and deleted all the generated hair strands and then placing my own with the count of one and the add brush and carefully attaching one hair at a time. When that was done I started combing the hair and dispersing them into various directions so that they're as chaotic as possible. Also I make them slightly more thick so that they stand out more when sticking out of the other hair. For example 0.12 for the radius root and 0.09 for the tip. Don't forget to set the amount of children to something small like one because we don't need that many. Of course you don't need to create this last hair system but it's this little additional layer of detail that always make the results look much better. One final useful tip I want to add is that you can actually select individual hair and then edit just that one. You can't select it by simply clicking on it but when you hit B to rectangle select or C to paint select it gets active. You can then grow your selection by hitting Ctrl plus and select the whole thing. Once selected you can comb it without affecting the other hair. Now I just quickly check the setup of the subsurface shader I use for the rest of the model. Check the world surface node and that it's set to light grey. Then set the color management to filmic. Add some denoising in the render layer tab and finally set a higher number of samples. Also be sure to add more rendering steps to all the hair systems and try experimenting with the B-spline. Both will make the hair strands look more detailed. And with that I am ready for the final render. So my friends this is the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If nothing else then at least to save your project often when working in the Blender 2.8 version. On the other hand the new principled hair shader is just awesome. I'm really happy with the results. The melanin system is easy to understand and the renders are quick. Overall another awesome addition by the Blender developers. Well done guys. I'll need a lot of hoplite crests to finish this project and I'll definitely be using this shader for rendering them. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and if you want to learn about Ancient Greece, Blender, Substance Painter or Photoshop, subscribe to this channel. I have a lot of content coming up and I can't wait what you'll think about it. Also the Aspis Shield course is available for free on YouTube. Definitely check it out or go to my Gumroad page and check the products there. And if you want, comment, I'll be happy to hear from you. Enjoy and take care.